and welcome to this Stair Tailored. I'm Erica Mason from the University of Missouri. Today's video is the first of a three-part series in which we talk about um, cognitively demanding tasks. And today's video is about how to identify those types of tasks. Um, before we kind of get started and dive into the details, let's talk about some considerations to make first. So before you're, uh, as you're thinking about sort of the mathematical tasks that you're gonna use and introduce to students, you're first gonna wanna draw your uh, thinking back to the goals for learning, right? So what's the point of learning? What is it that you want students to learn or walk away with at the end of your instruction? And that's gonna help you know um, whether or not you've chosen an appropriate task. Uh, the other thing to think about, and this comes from some research from um, Smith and Stein, is this idea that you want to keep in mind what would be an appropriate task for a student considering their grade level, their age, and their um, previous experiences. And so this is less about their instructional level, and it's really more about finding a task that's appropriate. So for example, if you were working with first grade students, uh, we would really discourage you from, from giving them a uh, one-step equation presented in standard form. Because while students at that age can reason algebraically, um, that type of uh, instruction or presenting a task in that way would be really inappropriate to what we would have expected them to learn and have been exposed to at that point. Let's also consider what I mean when I'm talking about the cognitive demand of a task. So I'm really asking us to think about the type of thinking required to do a problem. Arguably, all mathematics problems require some kind of thinking, but we can start to sort of attend to these nuances, right, of the different types of thinking or the kinds of thinking that different tasks require. So researchers in mathematics education, Margaret Smith and Mary Kay Stein, have identified four levels of cognitive demand, memorization, procedures without connections, procedures with connections, and doing mathematics. These four levels can help you take any mathematical task, evaluate it against these criteria, and then determine what level of cognitive demand your task is at. So let's look at examples at each level. The first level of task we're gonna talk about is memorization. And as the name suggests, at this level, you're asking students to recall things, to draw from their memory. These are things that students might say automatically, right? So um, at this level, the answers to these kinds of questions or the types of work that's produced from these demands are very predictable and uh, really exist at sort of a concrete level. So for an example, you might ask a student, what is the rule for multiplying fractions? And students might automatically reply, well, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators, right? Now, not only is that direct, it's really clear. You probably could have predicted what that answer was going to be. And in addition, um, there's really no ambiguity, right? There's really one clear right answer. So tasks at this level have those characteristics, um, and that's at the level of memorization. Next, we're going to talk about procedures with connections. So at this level, um, tasks at this level tend to be, again, very procedural, but really absent from any underlying connection or meaning. So here, you're having students um, talk about procedures or formulas, but again, you're not giving them the opportunity, or the task, I should say, doesn't give the opportunity for students to reason about whether or not that's accurate, to make connections within other mathematical ideas. Right? So an example of this would be a, a problem or a set of problems that look like this. Here, students could generate accurate uh, answers. They might even do it quickly. But we don't really know what students know about multiplying fractions. So this type of a task uh, is more than just having them memorize the procedure. But here, it's where students carry out the procedure, but with no underlying connection or no opportunity to explore the concept in a deeper way. Um, both memorization and procedures with connections are considered low-level demands. And tasks at low-level demands are not necessarily bad or aren't inherently unuseful, but typically teachers find that a lot of their instruction, especially for students with mathematics difficulty, tend to exist at this level. The next kind of task we're gonna talk about is procedures with connections. So at this level, students are using procedures, but in less clearly defined ways, right? And so the pathway, uh, for example, to solve a problem might be a little clearer, but then students are actually gonna to have to reason about why that works, or they're gonna to have to draw upon multiple areas of mathematics content in order to make sense of what they're doing. An example of this is uh, this problem. So find one half, sixth of one half. Use pattern blocks, draw your answer, and explain your solution. 
So again, students might draw on some knowledge they have about the procedure for what it means to multiply fractions, but then ultimately they're gonna have to represent it in a different way. And then they're really gonna have to go that extra step by explaining their solution. So here we're moving away from students sort of reproducing a particular answer and really inviting students to reason about and represent mathematics in whatever way that makes sense to them. You can imagine that if you presented this type of a task to students that you could get a whole variety of, of correct answers and but then would also have really interesting insight into the way students are thinking. And then lastly, we have this idea of tasks that require students to do mathematics. And at this level of task, students are really um, demonstrating a lot of their high level skills. So students are reasoning, they're explaining, they're justifying. Tasks at this level have no clear way and are highly ambiguous. And that's because it requires students to do a lot of cognitive work. Tasks at this level can also produce a little bit of anxiety. And that's because, again, students are working really hard to make sense of them. An example of this type of a task would be here. So create a real world situation in which, uh, for the following problem, 2 thirds times 3 fourths. Solve the problem you have created without using the rule and explain your solution. So here we're actually asking students to bring their own context to provide what a, a reasonable context would be for this problem. This is a really interesting task for many reasons. First, because by asking students to generate a context that works for this problem really lets you know whether or not they understand what's going on mathematically in this problem. So there are some contexts that just wouldn't make sense for this problem, while there are others that would lend themselves more naturally. And so by asking students to create the context, you're really getting insight into what they're thinking about and what they understand multiplying fractions to be. Uh, additionally, when you ask them to solve without using the rule, but then to explain their solution, you're again pushing students away from sort of a standardized or a procedural way of thinking, but instead you're saying there are other ways to reason about multiplying fractions and I'm gonna invite you to do that. And then I wanna hear you tell me uh, why that works or why that made sense to you. Um, it's important for you to remember that tasks at all levels are really important. And even though they're presented as kind of a hierarchy, they really aren't. That is, low level tasks aren't inherently bad and doing mathematics tasks aren't inherently good. But in fact, all are really necessary for all students to do throughout your instruction. So some logistical concerns that people often have when they're thinking about cognitive demand is, are these. So first, how often do we do these uh, or each type of task? I would encourage you to say that uh, you should seek to do a variety of tasks throughout the whole of your instruction. Um, often we tend to take those doing mathematics tasks and reserve them to the very end of a unit or when we think students have mastered all the prerequisite skills. But instead, I would encourage you to integrate those into your instruction so that students are always having the opportunity to engage with those types of tasks. And then that type of doing mathematics becomes normal in your classroom. So students can then uh, feel more confident and comfortable engaging in those types of tasks. Another consideration is for whom. So it might feel really intimidating to present a really challenging and cognitively demanding task, task to students who have mathematics difficulty or disabilities. But again, we would encourage you to give students those opportunities with the appropriate supports so that all students have the opportunity to reason at a high level um, and to really engage in some creative and interesting mathematical thinking. And then lastly, you might be thinking, well, where do these worthwhile tasks or these cognitively demanding tasks come from? Um, perhaps you have an existing math curriculum and uh, upon looking at it, you're, you think that there aren't really that many interesting or worthwhile tasks there. So instead, we would invite you to make some really simple modifications or adjustments to those tasks, which is actually a stair tailored video that you can check out after you finish, finish watching here. Uh, so again, just to reiterate, there are these four levels of cognitive demanding uh, tasks. There are some that are considered low level and some that are considered high level. We would encourage you to engage in all types of tasks uh, for all of your students throughout your instruction. Um, one fun action step that you could take today would be to pick a unit of instruction and evaluate all the tasks that are presented to students throughout that unit and determine what level of demand is required for each of those tasks. If you find that a lot of the tasks are really uh, at the low level of demands, 
If you also find that higher level demand tasks are reserved again for the end of the unit or are considered extension activities for which only some students will have the chance to do, you can think about really interesting ways to blend these ideas, to change those things up and to ensure that students have access to these things throughout the instructional unit. So thanks so much for watching this stair tailored video. Again, I would encourage you to stick around and check out my next video in which I talk about how you can create or adapt existing math tasks to increase their cognitive demand.